Good morning. It's good to be with you again today uh, to spend some time together in God's Word. Before we come to our study of Psalm 119, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we do thank you that you make yourself known to us. Thank you for your sovereignty in all things. We praise you that in good times or bad, we may come before you through our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray now that as we come to your word, that you would teach us uh, that we might walk rightly before you, that we might not be put to shame. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we come uh, today uh, to the final three verses of the Yod section of Psalm 119, uh, verses 78 through 80. And we'll remember that uh, the overarching principle that we saw at the beginning of Yod is the fact that the Lord's hands have made and fashioned us, that he has established us, that he is our creator and he is our uh, providential ruler in the time and place where we live, and that he's in control of all things. Last time we looked at the fact that we were looking to the Lord and to his steadfast love and to his mercy, both for comfort and for life. And so now we come uh, to see how, how this knowledge of God, this understanding, uh, affects our relationship with others. So let's hear God's word, starting at verse 78 of Psalm 119. Let the insolent be put to shame, because they have wronged me with falsehood. As for me, I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me, that they may know your testimonies. May my heart be blameless in your statutes, that I may not be put to shame. So notice here we have we have two sets of, of others, those outside of ourselves. The last time we were dealing with, with how I handle situations, with, with how it affects me. But first he says, here are these insolent ones. Another way to translate this would be arrogant. Here are the ones who are with their words casting uh, harm towards me. Those who think that maybe I'm crazy for following the Lord. Those who would taunt um, even the psalmist here. And notice uh, what he says. He says their, their taunts, their insolence um, is a wrong against the psalmist. And it's a wrong based in falsehood. It's not truth. They're not speaking truth. And oh, how painful it is to have. Um, it's painful enough when we are in the wrong. And when people find out about that wrong and we feel uh, poorly or badly about that, sometimes we, we feel bad as we come to the Lord and we confess our sins. We ought to always. We grieve over our sin. But how much even more painful it is when words are cast against us that are false. When we're spoken of falsely, we say, no, that's not what I did. That's not what I said. That's not what I thought. And here the psalmist says, Lord, here are those insolent ones. Here are those arrogant ones. Here are these ones casting false words at me. And they are doing it proudly. Help me. Help me. He says, let them be put to shame. May the truth come out. May the truth come out. The Apostle Peter uh, gives us help in his first epistle and thinking how to deal with this. He says, you know, put your gaze upon our Lord Jesus Christ. Think of him. Think of him who more than any of us ever had falsehood spoken against him. For he was the truth. For even we sometimes, even when we are at our most righteous in our dealings, there is some uh, impure motive. There is something tainted about it. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he didn't open his mouth. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. He did that on our behalf. And so uh, Peter says, you need to entrust yourself to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. And trust yourself to him. And, and that's what the psalmist is doing here. He says, Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you to bring the truth to light. I'm trusting you to bring shame upon these insolent ones. I'm trusting you to silence their mouths. But what am I going to do? He says, as for me, I will meditate on your precepts. You know, sometimes it's, it's easy for our meditation to become, what are the lies that people are speaking against me? What are the things that people are doing to hurt me? 
We start to meditate on that and, and we meditate on that. Well, how will I respond? How will I defend myself against those lies? How will I make this better? But that's not the psalmist course. He says, what's my meditation going to be? I'm going to meditate on your precepts, Lord. I'm going to meditate on your precepts. Remember, precepts are those simple ways, those minute details of how we put God's law, God's teaching into practice. His precepts, a step-by-step -step thing. Lord, I'm going to meditate today on how I can speak a, a gentle answer. I'm going to meditate today on how I can love my neighbor as myself. I'm going to meditate on what you tell me to pray for my enemies, to bless those who curse me. How can I do that, oh Lord? Teach me. I'm going to meditate on that. I'm going to meditate on my Lord Jesus Christ, who when he was reviled, didn't revile in return. I'm going to think about the end. I'm going to think about how God will bring all hidden deeds to light and that there will be a time of judgment for those who speak falsely. I'm going to meditate on all these things. I'm going to meditate on the fact that the Lord has placed these people around me. And even that this may be an opportunity for the gospel. I think about the Apostle Paul and Silas when they were thrown into to jail in, in Philippi. Wrongly accused. All they had done was set a slave girl free from demon possession by the power of the Holy Spirit. But they sat in prison, and rather than stirring on the fact that they were being mistreated, and they had been mistreated even though Paul was a Roman citizen, and he's going to bring this up later in the chapter, in Acts 16. But as they sat there at midnight, what were they doing? They were singing and praying, praising God, so that when the earthquake came and the jailer came to kill himself, Paul said, don't worry, we're all here, and the jailer said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? He wanted to hear the good news of salvation. It came as an opportunity for salvation. And so we must be, be mindful of the fact that wherever we are, the, even the, the insolent ones that are around us are under the hand of our Almighty God. And we th meditate on, Lord, how can I share your gospel today? How can I point to my Savior, Jesus Christ, even for these insolent ones. But then there are others that are around us, and this, this is the encouraging group. He says, let those who fear you turn to me. Now remember, earlier in this, in this very section, he had talked in verse 74 about those who fear you. He said, those who fear you shall see me and rejoice, as I'm understanding who you are, that they will see me and they'll rejoice that I've hoped in your word. And so even now, as those who fear you turn to me, or it could be translated, return to me. They come back. They come back. They see, I've hoped in your word. I, how am I handling myself? How am I meditating on your precepts? Even in the face of insolence, even in the face of arrogant, false lies. Well, they turn to me, and they can know your testimonies, the testimonies of the Lord, the Lord's faithfulness what the Lord does, how the Lord acts. They will see the Lord as he sustains his people. Oh, what a, a beautiful thing it is. Uh, if you're a, a younger person watching this, a, a younger Christian, uh, take the opportunity. Take the opportunity sometime even this week. Get together with an older saint. Ask them to share with you. How has the Lord been faithful to you? Tell me of times when the Lord has been faithful to you. Tell me times when the Lord has cared for you. Tell me of the blessings of the Lord. Oh, what an encouragement. And even if you're not the, a young one, or maybe you just are in the, in the middle somewhere, share, share with one another ways that the Lord has blessed you. Ask one another how little we do this when we get together. We, we talk about all sorts of things, but do we say, friend, Brother, sister, how has the Lord blessed you this week? How have you seen the Lord's hand at work? We can be an encouragement one to, not, to another. And that's, the psalmist is praying for this here. He says, Lord, help, help those who fear you to come back to me. 
And might it be an encouragement to them as they hear of your testimonies, what you have done, how you have been faithful to your servant. And finally, the psalmist prays for his heart. He said, in the midst of all of this, I pray for my heart. He says, my, may my heart be blameless in your statutes. Yet here I am surrounded by those who are casting falsehoods. Lord, it's easy for me to slip up. It's easy for me to fall into those sins. Lord, protect my heart. Guard my heart. Help me to be blameless in your statutes. Help me to hold on to your solid truth. And why? That I may not be put to shame. He asks for the insolent to be put to shame. For the falsehood to come to light. And oh, the, the blessing of knowing at the end those words of the Lord, well done, good and faithful servant. Is that your goal in life? Is that Are those the words you long to hear? Are you seeking to please men? Or are you seeking to please the Lord? Are you seeking his glory and honor and immortality from him as you pursue him? So may, may you this day be like the psalmist. May, may you pray, Lord, guard my heart. Guard my heart. Help it to be blameless in your statutes so that I won't be put to shame. Help me to recognize that the day is coming. I was just reading this morning uh, from Thomas Boston, and he's talking about secret prayer. And he was talking about uh, the elderly in secret prayer. And he was giving um, reasons that people would give that they might not go to secret prayer. And, and, and this objection was from the elderly who said, you know, I'm, I'm old and I'm infirmed. I just, I just can't be about praying. I don't have the strength and the energy to pray. And he said, oh, friend, don't worry about the business of the world. As you see the day of your death approaching, should you not be more about the work of the soul and secret prayer? And so, friends, might that be true of all of us as we are today, a week closer to death than the last time that I posted a video. Might we be those who are about heart work, soul work, praying, Lord, keep me blameless that I might not be put to shame. Help me to know the end. And help me to keep that in mind. So, might the Lord bless us this day. Might we remember that he is our faithful covenant God. Might we look to him for mercy and steadfast love. Might we remember that he is our creator, that he has placed us where we are. Might we look to him for support in the midst of falsehood that is cast against us. Might the meditation of our heart not be on the things that are said against us or the ways that we will answer those things, but might we meditate on God's good work? Might we think of how we can be an encouragement to and be encouraged by those who fear the Lord, sharing what he has done? And might we guard our hearts and ask the Lord to help us to do so? Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your great faithfulness, which is new every morning. We thank you. Uh, today that you are faithful that you will surround us with the people uh, that you sovereignly have deigned to do that you will give us opportunities even to show our trust and hope in you lord might we point men and women boys and girls to the hope that is ours in jesus christ in whose name we pray amen all right, I'll see you the next time.